So I often see students do this question in two parts. They do an analysis from B to C, calculate something, uh, calculate, I guess, their speed at point C, and then focus on C to D uh, to calculate how high it gets at D. I'm going to try to do it not in two parts, but all in one go uh, to try to reinforce the concept of the conservation of energy. So the conservation of energy uh, looks something like this. The change in mechanical energy will equal to the work done by the non-conservative forces. In this case, that would be friction as the non-conservative force. Uh, it's going to do negative work on this object. Uh, this is the compact version of the conservation of energy, the longer version, but maybe the one that's uh, more helpful when we go to solve the problem. It looks like this. So basically the starting mechanical energy plus any work that was added or maybe subtracted from the starting mechanical energy is going to equal the total final mechanical energy. And I chose this one instead of, so the, the only other option really, um, based on the previous lesson, the only major principle with the formula that could be used is the work energy principle, which is that. And the reason why I did not choose that one is uh, that often requires you to be able to uh, confidently calculate the network, so all the work's done by all the forces. And the problem with this question is the, the work done by gravity. Um, because the curve from C to D, uh, we don't exactly know we don't exactly know what the angle is uh, of the displacement. Uh, it's hard to use that formula f times d times cosine of theta. It's just an unknown angle right there. So that's kind of preventing me from just using uh, the delta k equals w, w net. All right. So I'm just going to go from this conservation of energy here. I should set a reference height. So for this one, I think it makes sense to set the reference height uh, just right where points A, B, and C are. And in that case, uh, the, the starting gravitational potential energy would be zero. The box starts right on the reference level. Uh, so that gravitational energy would be zero. Another zero is coming from this fact that it's going to come at a mo to a momentary stop at point D. So at the very end of this journey, it reaches point D at just, and it just comes to a rest there. So that means it does not have kinetic energy at that point. So I'll be crossing out K2, the final kinetic energy. And then I go from here. So I'm going to replace some things with formulas. So for uh, kinetic energy, it will be half m uh, v1 squared. For the work done by friction, um, the work done by friction is going to be the force of friction. So I'll use the work formula, force times displacement times cosine of theta. So what's the angle? between the displacement from B to C, because that's the only place where there's friction, is a friction patch, hence the title of this problem. So from B to C, the displacement's to the right, and friction is going to point to the left. So they're in directly opposite uh, directions, so that's going to be 180 degrees. And then the right side of the equation, potential energy will be MGH. All right, uh, I can do some more simplifications. Cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. So I'm just going to be changing that plus sign in front of the term to a minus sign. Furthermore, the force of friction is equal to mu times normal. That's just a formula for friction. Um, 
the displacement. I'm just going to keep in mind that that's from B to C. That's only two meters. And one last uh, formula replacement will be the normal force. Um, during the friction part, the, what the normal force is going to equal to the force of gravity. They're going to be balanced uh, because this box is not moving vertically as it's moving from B to C. So I'm allowed to replace the normal force with mg in this case. I said it out loud. If you were writing a problem set, you would have to write that out in a sentence. So I think I've replaced everything with uh, formulas here. And one thing that you may see happen is that every single term has mass in it. That means that if we divide both sides by mass, it cancels out. So it does not matter what the mass of this block is. And that's good because they don't tell us what the mass of the block is. So what's left is to solve for what they ask for, which is how high. How high is D? So I'm just going to solve for the H2, which looks like all I have to do is divide both sides by G, and then I've isolated for H2. So it's going to be, so the first term, half M, so half V1 squared, if I divide that by G, I'm just going to rewrite it as V1 squared over 2G. In the second term, negative mu g d, when I divide that by g, the g's just cancel. So I just get negative mu times displacement. So that's going to be the final formula. Uh, I'll do the substitutions now. So we've got 12 meters per second at the start. That's going to be squared over 2 times 9.8. Uh, minus the mu value is given, 0 0.20, and the displacement for the friction patch is 2. Okay, so let's calculate that out. So I'm kind of coming up with 6.9 meters. All right, um, these numbers are, I mean, let you get a final answer as a number. You may find, as you progress through your physics career, that they often stop giving numbers. At some point, they're going to stop giving you numbers, and they're going to ask you to just get to here, come up with an expression uh, that would give you the answer in general if they gave you numbers, um, but they won't actually give you numbers, so your question would stop there. So in one way, it's less work. Uh, in another way, it's a bit more scary. Some numbers are sometimes comfortable for some people, um, but you may want to start getting used to not relying on substituting numbers in early on.